Hey guys, welcome to Miller's Planet. Jay here. Uh, you've heard about radio transmission, right? Like you're a human that's lived on this planet for more than five years. Five-year-olds have heard about radios, right? This fact may or may not be surprising, but none of the sick-ass wireless technology we have today would exist if us humans didn't figure out a way to manipulate radio waves. Seriously, like Bluetooth, texting, phone calls, Wi-Fi, AM and FM radio, the internet, speeding tickets, they all utilize radio wave transmission. Part 1. The Electromagnetic Spectrum When you think of a radio signal, you probably don't automatically classify it as a light source, but it is. Radio waves in the electromagnetic spectrum have the longest wavelengths. So light, is it a particle? Is it a wave? Well, the general consensus after a number of slit experiments is that it's a little bit of both. Uh, when it wants to be, a wave of particles, if you will. What we do know is that those particles are known as photons, or massless packets of energy, and they all travel at roughly 300 million meters per second, all the wavelengths. Depending on the amount of energy a photon has, and therefore the frequency, electromagnetic waves can have wavelengths in the very microscopic, highly energy dense range that could do things like allow you to see or straight up ruin your DNA, or on the other lower energy end of the spectrum, they could have wavelengths that are ridiculously long. But every wavelength on the spectrum is composed of propagating electric fields and then perpendicular magnetic fields. Hence the term electromagnetic wave. An oscillating electric field inherently has a perpendicular magnetic field that oscillates orthogonally to it, and vice versa. So why do electric fields inherently have perpendicular magnetic fields, you might be asking yourself, and the answer to that would be uh, Maxwell's equations. And I know that's like, uh, hey, why is the sky blue? Oh, because we can see the color in the sky and we can tell that it's blue. But trust me, it would be a whole big thing just for now, Maxwell's equations. Anyway, the radio part of the spectrum is today's topic, which leads me to my next part. Part two, radio signals. So circuits that transmit and receive radio signals, they rely on AC. But before I can jump into radio transmission, I need to quickly lay out some facts about AC and induction. So this is a copper wire. When there's current running through it, if a voltage is applied, a magnetic field is induced around the wire. With direct current, that magnetic field is static and unchanging, but in alternating current, the magnetic field oscillates with the changing current. That changing magnetic field is crucial for induction. Actually, that's like half the definition. Induction is the production of an electromotive force, aka voltage, across an electrical conductor in a changing magnetic field. Quick but relevant side note, guess what radio waves have? They have oscillating magnetic field lines. But I'm going to come back to radio waves in a minute. In a copper wire, you can use the direction of the current to determine which way the magnetic field is pointing. This also works for coils. If you match your hands with the direction of the current flow, your thumb will indicate the north end of the produced magnetic field. When you bring one of these current carrying wires or coils, we'll just use coils as an example, next to a dormant conductive surface, like another wire or coil without a power source, the magnetic field that emanates from the coil induces a current in coil or wire number two. In that last sentence I said that they just needed to be close to each other, I think that's a little too vague. Conductor 2 needs to cut coil 1's magnetic field lines perpendicularly for a voltage to appear. If conductor 2 is aligned perpendicularly to coil 1's magnetic field, and every magnetic field intrinsically has a perpendicular electric field, that means electrons in coil 2 will be aligned with coil 1's electric field, and hence coil 2's electrons are affected and a current is produced. That is how an antenna in a receiver works. Electromagnetic waves, radio waves, come in and produce an alternating current in the antenna via induction. When radio waves hit an antenna, the frequency of the produced AC matches the radio wave's frequency and that AC travels through the antenna down to that device's circuitry. Like let's say we had a speaker, that AC might go through an amplifier to make the signal stronger, then that stronger signal gets sent to speakers. The diaphragm of those speakers move according to the frequency of the signal and thus waves are created in the air that eventually reach your ear and are interpreted by your eardrums and then signals coming from your ear tell your brain that you are hearing stuff. I want to come back to receivers and move on to part three. Part three, transmitters. So transmitters, they transmit radio waves. But how do they do this? Well, the wavelength of the transmitted radio waves 
determines how big the transmitting antenna needs to be. So first of all, different things are allocated certain bandwidths or a certain range of frequencies. Like a big one is the 2.4 gigahertz band. It's the band of frequencies used for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell phones, microwaves. Yeah, technically your cell phones and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all work in the microwave radiation section of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it's not giving you cancer. There is a difference between the radiation coming out of your microwave and something like a Wi-Fi router, and that difference is power. So microwaves usually put out around 1200 watts, and something like a Wi-Fi router normally does like 0.1 watts. Their amplitudes are way different, and not to mention Wi-Fi routers, they radiate omnidirectionally, so power is dispersed. Anyway, how are these radio waves like physically transmitted? Well, you might have heard of monopole and or dipole antennas. Monopole antennas are relatively simple. They're conductive cylinders that need to be a certain length to transmit and receive certain radio wavelengths. One terminal is the monopole itself and the other is ground. In radio broadcasting, this might be the actual ground or on circuit boards, it might be the ground pin. The outputted radio signal, as kind of mentioned earlier, is omnidirectional, meaning it propagates radially in all directions horizontally. Dipoles are a little bit more involved. They have two conducting rods that are fed AC from the middle, and when this happens, electrons move from one end of the antenna to the other very quickly. So you can kind of think of the transmitting end as one straight line that keeps shuttling electrons back and forth. And if you look at the electric field lines from the moving charges as this is happening, the overall electric field doesn't really have time to react to this sudden change. This kind of inability to react quickly forms kinks, or weak points in the electric field. As these electric field lines intersect after the electrons move to the other side of the antenna, the electric field lines close off and the field moves off and propagates outward. It's like if you were blowing bubbles and you have one of those stick things, you blow into it and then the liquid kind of closes in on itself and then the bubble moves outward. Before these waves can be transmitted though, they need to be modulated. Like if we look at things like cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth, radios, their signals are too weak to be sent out on their own. So what happens is, before being transmitted, the original outgoing signal is combined with a more powerful carrier wave, each with their own method. Like AM radios use amplitude modulation, which takes the carrier wave, keeps its original frequency, but shapes its amplitude to match the frequency of the original signal. The receiver then reads that carrier signals changes in amplitude and interprets that as being the frequency. FM radios use frequency modulation, basically the same thing, but instead of changing the carrier wave's amplitude to indicate highs and lows, FM uses higher and lower frequencies to indicate highs and lows. More recent wireless technology uses something called digital modulation. CPUs operate on logic signals, zeros and ones, or in other words, they operate on square waves. Like for example, with Wi-Fi on the receiving end, i.e. your laptop, those zeros and ones are converted into internet stuff like ASCII text files and website server data. Digital modulation is like regular AM and FM, but for square waves. They're kind of doing the same thing. They're just labeled differently. There's frequency shift keying and amplitude shift keying, which being the digital version of AM and FM, it's exactly what it sounds like. There's one other thing I wanna talk about with antennas and that is gain. Antenna gain is the power transmitted by an antenna in a specific direction versus an isotropic antenna, which is basically an omnidirectional antenna with 100% efficiency at one decibel. It represents how strong a signal an antenna can send out or receive in a specified direction. It can be represented mathematically as the product of directivity and efficiency. Directivity is the concentration of an antenna's radiation pattern in a certain direction and efficiency accounts for the power losses of an antenna. Part four, receivers. And lastly, what happens on the receiving end? How do these airborne signals get interpreted as useful information? Well, step one is the transmitted radio signal needs to reach the receiver's antenna. The receiving antenna, though, needs to be aligned with the incoming signal's polarity. Like if the receiver's antenna is perpendicular to the transmitters, a lot less signal will affect the antenna. Also, that receiving antenna needs to be a certain length. It has to either match the wavelength or a half or a quarter of the wavelength so the signal resonates within the antenna avoiding any constructive or destructive interference. Then that signal needs to be demodulated. There are a lot of ways to do this depending on what device you're working with and how the signal was modulated before. But then after that, the circuitry of that device can use that remaining signal to do useful things. For Wi-Fi, we know that would be a series of zeros and ones. For an FM radio, that might be a frequency outputting to a pair of speakers, etc., etc. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap things up there. But uh, about my next video, the atmosphere surrounding this whole COVID-19 issue is so goddamn depressing. It's been everywhere. I don't know if you guys have been able to find a crevice where the news is not seeped in 
to your frame of reference, but I have not. The next video I do has to be something that takes my mind off of this in a good way. I have a few ideas I like. I think I'm going to start a poll and leave it down in my community tab. Uh, make sure to go vote. But seriously, if you're a healthcare worker or you know a healthcare worker, uh, go thank them or thank yourself. Those are some brave motherfuckers. Guys, be sure to stay safe. Be smart about this. Wash your hands. Isolate yourself. Scrub your ass. Please just stay inside. For the love of all healthcare workers, stay indoors. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.